Hey, welcome to Pond Pals. Here we're at our Biophilia's front pond where we're gonna do some dip netting. Now normally we do some dip netting with our students and we use these types of dip nets to catch our critters so that we don't get soggy socks. So let's go dip netting and we'll show you what we find today. So now we're gonna take a look at some of the creatures that we caught in our pond. From the smaller, safer, gentler creatures. And we use these great little ID sheets to some of the scarier, creepier creatures. There is a feisty little crawfish and you may see that that one claw is actually much smaller. It is in the process of growing back. As these guys are swimming away from predators, they oftentimes will actually release their claws and then swim away to safety. The way safety. they swim away from their predators is by actually flicking that tail very hard, which then propels them backwards through the water. These guys are going to be used mostly for cleaning up the waste of other animals in the water, so they're kind of just like a clean Here we have crew. a couple barking tree frog tadpoles swimming around, and these guys eventually will turn into something looking a little bit different. All right, so here we have a, a very special frog that, that we could possibly dip net, we could possibly catch in our ponds. When we dip net, uh, we'll catch their tadpoles uh, usually. And this one is called a barking tree frog. The largest tree frog that lives around here. Um, his name is Bob Barker. He is one of our, our folks that uh, stays with us. He's not one of our wild ones at this time, unless he gets away from me right now. But uh, they are very special because they require a pond that does not have fish in it, a fishless pond. And when we think of ponds, we think, fish, but there's actually special ponds here that don't have fish in them. And we have a lot of different animals that live in these ponds uh, that require that fishless type of environment. Uh, when this one calls, this one's a male by the way, and the males are the ones that call, uh, and they're the ones that uh, are trying to attract the female. And when this one calls, and, and what's really neat about frogs is that every different type of frog we can tell by, by their call. And this one, when he calls, he goes, arr, 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 arr. I mean, that's pretty pitiful for a, a barking tree frog call, but, but they sound a little similar to that. So if you hear these around your place, you, may, you could have these living with you uh, around, around your area. Uh, they vary in coloration. This one's just a beautiful, incredible green. And they vary from gray, silver colored to all green sometimes. But the easiest way to identify them is by the size and by their toes. You see those, the toes that they have, the typical tree frog. All right, this scary critter is the giant water bug, also commonly known as the toe biter. If you look at the back, you can see the little siphon, and that's actually how they breathe. Yes, they breathe out of their butts. Now, if you look at the front on their front arms, you can see those little stingers, and they don't bite, they will sting, and it does not feel good. This is a young Bellostoma, which is in the same family as the giant water bug. These little guys are called water boatmen, and we can tell that because of the oar-like swimmer arms that they have on each side. This is a pouch snail and a ram's horn snail. These are actually toad tadpoles. These are predaceous diving beetle larva, which actually will turn into a beetle. This little guy is a whirligig beetle, and he stays at the top of the pond, and they whirl around. Now that we looked at all the small critters we can find in a pond, let's go look at the larger ones that eat them. All right, so what we have here right now 
are a couple really cool salamanders, which are amphibians. They live in the water and on land. Uh, these two are our largest salamanders that could possibly live in this area. Uh, what is so important about these guys is that they need to be living in an area where there is, again, those fishless ponds, just like that barking tree frog. So if there's fish in that pond, there's a good chance you won't have them around. But if you have that fishless pond around, a possibility that you could have these guys. They, live, they tend to live underground. They're a type of mole salamander, so don't, we don't see them that often. Uh, but what's really neat is in the winter time, that's when they breed, they will come to the surface and find that fishless pond. And that's where you find them a lot, is when they're walking you tell that, that they, they vary sometimes in coloration. This one actually is from eastern Texas. It was found at a bait store. Somebody was getting ready to, uh, somebody was, you know, they were selling it for bait uh, as a larva, as when it was a smaller, a smaller animal. So it was kind of neat that this person that I know found, saw it there at the bait store and they bought it and then brought it home. And now I've had it here about seven years. This one is pretty close to 10 years old now and they'll live about 15 years. Really easy to work with, really, really a sweet sweet tiger salamander. Now this one is more of our local tiger salamander. This one was found in somebody's neighborhood in Tallahassee. And he was found on the road to walk into a pond and his tail was bit off. It was, part of it was gone. And he was very emaciated. He's very skinny. He needed something to eat and he wasn't doing well. He was starving. So this person went ahead and gave him to me and now He's just as spippy looking as possible, just as gorgeous. This as is be. one of our musk turtles. We have a couple different types of musk turtles that live around here. And this one is called a loggerhead musk turtle. Uh, really quite, quite beautiful. The, the color of their shell quite frequently de is determined by where they're living, what type of habitat they're in. If you're in a clear water spring where they really are relatively common in these clear water springs, they'll have this beautiful pattern on them. If they're in dark tannic water, then their shell will tend to be dark and tannic. And we call them loggerhead because you can see he has a pretty good sized head. But what's really neat is in a few years as he matures, this one's still a young one, he's only about five years old, as he matures his head will get much bigger and it will definitely look like a big old loggerhead, big headed turtle. And we call them musk turtles because they're so little and they need a special way to protect themselves. So if something comes along and attacks them when they're out of that water, they put out a really strong odor. And that odor probably tastes real bad. I've never tasted it. Uh, but it would taste real bad, and then that raccoon wouldn't want to have anything to do with it. It would just drop it. And you can see his head now. This one is most common, not so much in ponds, but in rivers, streams. If you like to go canoeing, it's real, you'll find them when you're canoeing. Hug the shore, and what they'd like to do is they'd like to climb out of that water and bask on trees that are totally vertical, and they'll just attach themselves to that tree and just hang on to that tree and that's how they sun themselves and warm up. And then if you hear a kerplop, that means that you probably heard a little turtle this dropping in the water. This is just a small percentage of what you can find in your local aquatic environment. Now, ecosystems like ponds are an incredibly diverse area with lots of different creatures in them. So if you're looking around in your local neighborhood, maybe in a pond, a creek, a stream, whatever it might be, take a close look and see if you can find any of those creepy crawlies like that. Now, after we've identified them, we return them back to their home, back in our front pond here at the Balthelia Center. Thanks for checking in with us, guys. We'll see you next week.